We've never seen more change in customer behavior than in the past year and a half. It, it's almost crazy how overnight we created new habits and new behaviors. And this is the perfect moment to rethink our customer strategy and ask ourselves if there is so much change from a customer point of view, what are the implications for our customer strategy? Now, this is the old way how we used to do marketing, how we used to invest our marketing budget. We did everything we possibly could to make sure that customers would come to us, to our store, to our website, to our event, to our booth on a trade show. I think in the next couple of years, we're going to spend more and more marketing budget to make sure that customers or that we go to where the customer is, that we turn the old model upside down. And the sentence, be where the customer is, sounds really obvious, but there's a big chance that many of you are doing the opposite, that many of you are doing whatever you can to make sure that the customer comes to where you are. Let's see how we can turn this around. And, and this presentation is an invitation to think more about fluid customer relations. Because the truth is that probably most of your businesses, most of the people who are watching right now, are in an ad hoc sales business where the customer comes to you, where you try to sell them a product or a service, and then you have to do a lot of effort to make sure that they will come back to you. The invitation in this presentation is to broaden up your scope and look for ways how you can go to market in different ways and be where the customer is. Now, let's look into this model and see at the, let, let's take a look at the evolution that we've been through in the last couple of years. So traditionally, you have business models that we're all very familiar with. Uh, let's take a gym, for instance. A gym, you pay a monthly fee, and then you have unlimited access to the gym facilities. You have a doctor, you go to the doctor, you pay for that one visit. It's an ad hoc model, but you go to the doctor. And you have Google, which is a free model, but you go to Google and you type in the question. What we see now, mainly because of the big digital jump forward that we have in the last 18 months, is that new models, new successful models happen to rise on the other side of the model. Uh, the, the opposite of the traditional gym, for instance, is Peloton bikes. Uh, if you don't know Peloton bikes and you see the, the image here, you may think, oh, that's probably a very expensive home training device. And, and it is, it is expensive. But it's more than just a home training device. It offers a complete new digital experience. Uh, you step on your bike, you use the built-in screen and you select your own personal trainer who gives you a live session. They know that you're online, so they can do a shout out and say, hey, Steven, you need to do a better job, man. There's a leadership board, so you can see how well you're performing with others. And you're, you're experiencing all that from the comfort of your own home. I probably don't need to explain you guys that these Peloton people were extremely, extremely successful during the past year and a half. And it's the opposite model of what we were used to in the gym. In my opinion, if you bought yourself a Peloton bike, bike in the last year and a half, you will not go back to the gym. Because we used to think that the gym was a social activity. Let's be honest, it's not. Uh, you, when you go to the gym, your eyes are glued to a screen, your ears have their AirPods, and there's no social activity whatsoever. There, even on the contrary, there's more social activity with Peloton bikes in that digital experience where the experience is built in the comfort of your own home. Let, let's look at the alternative for a doctor visit. You now have this company called Ping An, which is, which is a Chinese insurance company, and they have this app called Good Doctor, and it's a brilliant system. Uh, when you feel pain or when you don't feel well, you type in the symptoms that you have, in real time, they will connect you with a doctor. They have thousands of doctors that are always online. And this doctor acts as some sort of a filter. Uh, they will ask you questions. And if they feel that something serious is happening, they will, of course, send you to a physical location for more in-depth examination. But in many cases, it's just something minor. And then they will sell you your medication online, and they will send it to your house, and it will arrive there in less than one hour. I mean, this is a great model. If I look, I, I'm from Belgium. If I want to go to a doctor in Belgium, I have to make an appointment, then I have to drive to the doctor, I have to wait in the waiting room, 
and we have this crazy thing in Belgium, even if you're the first patient, they still let you wait. I don't know if that's the same in your countries, but in Belgium, we still have to wait. Then you have the examination, then you get the prescription, then you drive to the pharmacy, then you have to wait in line in the pharmacy, you have to buy your stuff in the pharmacy, you drive back home. I mean, I have to take half a day off versus this model. Be where the customer is. And, and these guys from Good Doctor, they're very extreme in this mindset. Uh, so now they're building these mobile clinics. They're calling this mobile clinics. It, and if you're like me, 40 plus, then this will remind you to an old phone booth huh? back in the days. But this is a mobile clinic. You walk in, you have a video call with a doctor, then you walk out to the other side, you scan your QR code, and there you go. You got your medication in just a few minutes time. Good Doctor is now by far the most popular healthcare platform in the world. And the reason is very simple. They turned the model upside down and they bring the service to the customer. And because of that, the effort of the customer is almost reduced to zero. But the same can be said about the alternative of Google, huh? uh, TikTok. Take, compare those two algorithms and two approaches. Huh? So if you go to Google, and you have a question, like for me, the future of customer experience. I type in the question, and then Google tells me, oh, great news, Stephen, we have 1.4 billion hits for you. Enjoy your research process. I still have to do the effort. I still have to do a lot of effort before I actually get to the content that I need. Uh, that's the traditional model that they've been using for the last two decades. Compare this with TikTok. I mean, if you go to TikTok, the first second, you're already exposed to content. And then based on your clicking and swiping and liking behavior, they will feed the algorithm. And because of that, they will get, you will get content that is in line with your expectations, which is a different flow of algorithm. And because of that, the effort of the user is much lower. The content is being exposed directly where we are. And we don't have to go to the place where the content is. So, you know, I, I like these different examples just to show you how new models are being built on the right-hand side of this model. This does not mean that the left-hand side has become irrelevant. On the contrary, both bring value to customers and to your organization in different ways. But my invitation is to be more open-minded, to look for new opportunities that present themselves. Huh? It, even a company like Amazon. I mean, traditionally, Amazon was a bookstore, right? We went to Amazon, we bought something, and then we leave. Early on in the process, they understood that you need to have loyalty to make sure that you don't have to do all the marketing effort to get people back and back and back again. So that's why they created Amazon Prime. Uh, in my opinion, still the most brilliant loyalty program in the world. I, mean, I, I love this graph here. Basically, it, it's almost crazy to see eh, that almost every American household is on Prime, 82%. That's more people that are on Amazon Prime than people that actually had a Christmas tree last Christmas. I love that statistic. But now you see how Amazon is expanding the model also to the right-hand side to bring services closer to the customer. Like, like they have their STEM club where you pay a monthly fee and then every month your child for any age group will receive a box where they find experiments and toys and tools to you know, play with, with and discover science mathematics, basically everything that has to do with STEM education. But it's a model where you pay a monthly fee, and after that, the service is being brought to your house on a continuous basis. But maybe more appealing uh, is Alexa. It means once you have the hardware, Alexa is a free service from the comfort of your own home. So you see how a company like Amazon is starting to play with these different formulas and is becoming more and more fluent. And this is my open invitation to you guys. There's a big chance that your organization is building its business, is building its customer relations on the left-hand side of this model, which is great. Keep on doing that. But my invitation is to broaden up your scope and look for new ways how you can reach out to your customers in a way that you're closer to where they are and where you invest more and more marketing dollars in being where the customer is. I hope that this mindset will help you to be more successful towards your customers. If you like these ideas, please like the video, share it, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in one of my next presentations. Thank you very much.